Lads, another day, another dollar. It's great to be back in the, the setup with the fellas. Head hard and balls, Nisbo and Staff. Tell you what, I'm still, um, still in the herd locker from last week, boys. Hell of a test match down in, in the glass box, Nisbo. You're down there, mate. Yeah, one of the best test matches we've ever seen. People always say to me, uh, you know, what are the best test matches have you seen? I think probably the one where Jonah scored in Sydney, but I reckon that game in Dunedin was right up there, certainly in the top half dozen. It was epic. It was it was the test match that rugby needed, especially in this part of the world, I thought, and uh, certainly didn't want Aussie to win. I wanted them to be competitive, but I was... I was Fair dink and poo in my gusset at, with, with about four minutes to go, and I thought Aussie were going to get up and win. Thank God they didn't. But anyway, fellas, we head down to Yarrow Stadium this weekend for a bit of argy bargy against the Argies and um, a different kettle of fish. Staff. Mm, yes, hola, como estas, uh, de nada. Uh, looking forward to the Argentinians, actually, and... Uh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dangers of cooking in the studio, the sandwich maker. <laughs> you know what's funny? And it's not actually funny, it's scary stuff. The fine print of what's actually going to happen to the rugby laws in New Zealand if one of these parties get in. People don't know. I went and did some research, as I do, because I'm a journalist. Have you gone through manifestos? The answer is yes. So if Labour gets in, they want to go back to goldie oldie scrums. Ridiculous. Mm. They also want to take um, the match fees away from the players and give it to the security guards, which is just barbaric. And then uh, obviously the third, um, which I'm also for, and this is where they might get my vote, is the legalisation of marijuana on the sidelines for someone who's got concussion. Oh, so, medicinal cannabis. Yeah, so speed up the process, and I can see that. National, on the other hand, they want to double the match fees of the players. They also want to extend the fields. No surprises there. And also, they want to put in an extra bus lane for Julian Severe. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, big changes, mate. Well, see, I, I heard that um, Winston Peters wanted to sponsor the scoreboard uh, because the All Blacks always win, so New Zealand first. That's one I heard. <laughs> <laughs> And it's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> well, that's, well, that's Winston to a T. And I, but the Greens as well. Like I, I'm a bit of a fan of the Greens, actually. Well, you know, you're a fan of Hayley Holt. And that, no, that that's same with me, man. It takes two to tango, mm. you know. So yeah, true. Quick shout out to my uh, sister's daughter's brother, uh, Sam, over there in Perth. Just have a good day, champ. Um, yeah. So the Greens, fertilizer on the grounds, that sort of thing. I'm just, I'm a bit concerned about that. Yeah, well, you know what I'm really worried about is the divide in the All Blacks because obviously they're humans as well. They're not just All Blacks, they're <laughs> human beings, civilians, and they've got a vote as well, staff. And uh, knowing Izzy Dag, he's, you know, he's right wing, uh, so he's far up the Nationals' ass. And also uh, Rico Iwani, very left field. Uh, he'll be with Jacinda. And, you know, this kind of um, divide in the ABs, how is this going to affect them playing on Saturday, Nisbo? I hadn't really thought about it. What I was going to ask you guys... Uh... I want to know what Gareth Morgan's policy is on all of this. Oh, he's just like... Well, no, uh, pussies. Yeah, no, no, oh, no cats, sorry. Uh, yeah, well, I, uh, oh, maybe we should get back to the game. Uh, Nisbo, <laughs> <laughs> Nisbo, a lot of changes to the AB set up this weekend. Yeah, there are quite a few. I think seven in all from the team that started against the Wallabies. I suppose the most notable is Nehe Milner Scudder coming back. Great to see him back. Uh, first match since the World Cup final in 2015. So really good to see him back on the international scene. And I think the guy getting his first start for the All Blacks is via Fafita. So uh, big Hurricanes presence, boys. Big Hurricanes presence. Yes, we like that. We like that. That steak's raw, and Steak. Look what our country's coming to. Well, our, na- our world's coming to. Mm. Who the hell knights a piece of steak? Sirloin. Yeah, Nisbo, thoughts on this weekend? You know, down at Yarrastam, the, the home of the Naki, the home of Barrett Royalty. Uh, can Barrett yeah, get over the line a couple of times? Oh, yeah, probably. Oh, look, I was there last week and it wasn't, one, it wasn't a great night, so I hope it's better this Saturday. It was, it was flaming awful, to be honest with you. But, uh, look, I think the All Blacks will win pretty comfortably, guys. Um, I, I'm picking sort of somewhere in the 20 to 30 range. They'll just be too good. I think the Pumas have been disappointing this year, unfortunately. I mean, they just haven't really kicked on, have they, in the last couple of years? A Puma pants. <laughs> oh, no, sorry, I'm wearing my yeah, Puma pants. Yeah, sorry, oh, Puma, Puma. Yeah, Puma pants. Puma pants. 
So what I think will happen in this one, like uh, the long range weather forecast, like from now until right until we start, uh, is not good. And so uh, the the bull ring, the fish bowl, Yarrow Stadium, Rugby Park is going to be wet and it's going to be muddy and the Argentinian strength is in the forward. So I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if low scoring. So I'm sort of thinking maybe 30 points to nine or some, somewhere in that sort of vicinity, Nisbo. I, I can't see a run and gun game here. I thought that last week when um, when Counties Manukau played Taranaki and it was a high scoring game, even though the conditions weren't very good. It's, it's a lovely surface there, boys. Look, I'm, I'm with you, though, Staff, in terms of the margin. I think somewhere around 21, 25, somewhere around there. Mm. Mm. Well, uh, I'm in the similar boat, lads. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with um, Bodie Barrett to um, score twice, um, once on the field and once afterwards as well, after the game, obviously, with his beautiful girlfriend, Hannah. No, you mean scores two tries, eh? Oh, yeah, scores two tries, yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't know what he's paying there, but um, in front of his hometown, you know, the Farnow will be there, the extended family, his old man. and um, His brother on the bench. His brother on the pine. Mm. Will Geordie be there, do you think? Geordie will be there. Yeah. He'll be there. Or he might just be at home on a sleepyhead bed. He endorses that now. Does he? Uh, in the little chicken wing, injured chicken wing. But, yeah, hey, fellas, it's exciting to have the Argies back here on our, our home turf, and... Uh, they're always exciting, you know. They bring a lot of fizz. They're very passionate. Um, hopefully, see a few tears during the national anthem. Uh, it actually reminded me when I went over to um, Argentina once, uh, and I was in one of these butchers, and I was like, "Hey, mate, um, I bet you ten bucks you can't get that that meat off the top shelf." And he goes, "I can't, mate. The stakes are too high." <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Up the ABs, good on you, Shag, good on the fellas, and good luck to the Barrett brothers. Um, hopefully you guys deliver the goods. See you next week. Will you?